a continuation of the success is maybe talking about the more popular parts of um, Kamala Harris's economic plan, get that out there into the ether for voters who don't have a strong sense of her policy um, to the extent that any concerns about her policy positions are a problem for voters. What we've seen in the polling data so far is that you know she's risen anywhere between five to eight points in all of these swing states. So voters aren't really concerned about her policy and they're very primed to be opposed to Donald Trump, um, which is why he's lost every election since 2016. So I think getting a little bit of a message about out on policy, but not too much, is probably the strategy. Keeping the good energy going. Uh, President Biden will speak tonight. We'll keep uh, forward with that. I think there's a lot of folks waiting to see where Michelle Obama comes out. Uh, mm. But Barack Obama will be there, Hillary, Bill Clinton. It's just a big rah-rah. Yep. And I expect that polling will continue to reflect the boost that either party gets from a DNC or an RNC which is two to three points. And that that point basis, once it gets tacked onto the polls next week, is going to be sufficient to put her outside of the margin of error in all of these swing states. And that's a big problem for Trump right now. How concerned is Donald Trump and, I guess more importantly, the Republican Party at this point? Very concerned. From House members who were hoping to pick up all 10 of the toss-up races in the House of Representatives, uh, the senators that are not in Ohio and Montana are really concerned. Um, and then at the top of the ticket, I think you can see it from the change up that they're doing at the campaign staff. I think maybe they finally seized on a campaign message trying to tie Kamala Harris to her economic policies that she rolled out on Friday. Uh, but one thing I'd really point out there and where I'm spending some time digging into the data is that when inflation was 9%, a month later, Democrats went on to keep House Republicans to the lowest majority wins of any majority party, excuse me, minority party in 100 years. So I don't know that the inflation stuff is going to beat out all all the rest of it, um, and and that's what history has suggested in the midterms and the 2020 general. What do do we vote? I mean, I know we don't vote on foreign policy, but do we vote on border debates, immigration debates? Uh, do you, do you buy the cliche? It's all about economics. Man, you know, it's really tough because 2020 was not about economics. Yeah. Uh, I think that Biden narrowly won because of COVID and because of Donald Trump's and President Trump's response to COVID at the time and sort of the chaos of that administration. And then in 2022, as I suggested, I mean, inflation was seven, eight, nine percent that summer, just two months, a month before the actual election. And Democrats somehow still held the United States Senate, which was shocking. Um, so I think voters are quick to say that it's the economy. It's perpetually the number one issue. Inflation is right up there. But it's followed very closely by immigration and yeah. abortion. And, and, and turnout right. is really the name of the game. The gender gap is where you should probably pay attention to that issue.